Aaron Prawley here, aka The Film Freak, and I interrupt a Film Freak short to bring you another special movie review. Yesterday I had the opportunity to check out Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and oh my god, I've got to talk about this one. But before I do, I just want to say that I really liked this movie, but at the same time I didn't, if that makes any sense. Now because it just dropped, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, so I'm not going to go into great detail about the story and plot. Instead I want to express my overall thoughts about the movie, and I'll also be talking a little bit about Ghostbusters Afterlife, just to back up my thoughts. Because after all, Frozen Empire is the sequel. Alright, well let's start off on a positive note and talk about the cast. Everyone from Afterlife comes back for this one. Paul Rudd, Finn Wolfhard, McKenna Grace, Carrie Coon, Logan Kim, and Celeste O'Connor. Now I find when it comes to the introduction of new characters, depending on how they're portrayed, they can either make or break a franchise. Well I loved their characters in Afterlife, and I think they're great additions to Ghostbusters. Paul Rudd's Mr. Gruberson is great. He's a middle school science teacher who specializes in seismology, he has a bit of knowledge about history, culture, and the paranormal, and is an amateur parapsychologist. He's a Ghostbusters fanboy. Finn Wolfhard's Trevor is your typical teenage character. He tries to act all cool and stuff, but just comes off as awkward. A lot of people don't care for Callie, the daughter of Egon Spangler, and I can understand why. She's a single mom who's struggling financially. She's not exactly the nicest toward Phoebe and Trevor, or respecting what her late father was about, but I think Carrie Coon is great in the role. But McKenna Grace is Phoebe. God, I love this character. She's hilarious, adorable, and you can definitely tell that she's Egon's granddaughter. There's a family resemblance. Ghostbusters Afterlife was a get to know them period, and now in this one, we get to see what they're like as Ghostbusters. You know, they've got their own jumpsuits, their own proton packs, they're hanging out in the firehouse answering calls. It's a step up from how we first saw them. Other great additions include Kamel Nanjani, James Acaster, my man Patton Oswald, and a face we haven't seen since the first Ghostbusters movie, William Atherton as Walter Peck. You remember Walter Peck, right? He worked for the Environmental Protection Agency and tried shutting down the Ghostbusters? Well, he's back, and not much has changed after 40 years. He's still hell-bent on taking them down, and like with Venkman and company, Phoebe and them want nothing to do with him. And speaking of Venkman, that's the last thing about the cast I want to talk about. The OGs. Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, and Annie Potts. All returning for this fourth installment, and unlike in the previous film where they seem to just provide fan service, this time they are integral to the story. So we get to see a lot more of them, and honestly, seeing them team up with Gruberson and the Spanglers, it was like that moment in Jurassic World Dominion where Owen and Claire were with Doctors Grant, Sattler, and Malcolm. Old team joining forces with the new team. Another thing I like is that this movie is set in New York again. If you remember in Ghostbusters Afterlife, it took place in the town of Somerville, Oklahoma. It was a nice change in scenery, but New York has always served as the backdrop for this franchise. So now it really feels like how a Ghostbusters movie should be. Now for what I didn't like. Aside from the fact that Gil Keenan is now in the director's chair, he really goes in for the scares with this one. Ghostbusters is not meant to be overly scary. Like, there's some horror elements in it, but it's also mixed with comedy and science fiction. Although the previous film had its share of jump scares, this one was like, freaking spook central. Every moment puts you on edge, and then when it happens it's like, oh! So, if you're like me and you scare easily, just brace yourself. But what I didn't like the most was the main baddie. So unlike in Afterlife where the Ghostbusters take on Gozer the Gazarian again, this time they battle a new entity known as Garaka, also dubbed the Death Chill. He possesses the same abilities as Gozer and Vigo as he too can bring forth evil spirits, but his main power is ice manipulation, and anyone who comes in direct contact will literally freeze to death, hence why he's dubbed the Death Chill. Now Garaka is something that the Ghostbusters have never dealt with, but why does he have the power to control ice? Like, really? Were there no other powers the writers could come up with? Especially when you think about other characters who can use snow and ice to their advantage, like Mr. Freeze, Elsa, Frozone, and Sub-Zero. Garaka could have been made out to be the most badass villain, instead he's just portrayed as a scary ice monster. Not very original. Other than that, there's nothing else to really complain about. 
All of the witty dialogue is still there. The special effects were top-notch with that blend of practical and digital. There's not much of a soundtrack, but it's got a great score by Dario Marianelli. It not only continues to reference previous films, but also the real Ghostbusters. So if you grew up with the animated series, be sure to watch for those Easter eggs. And as Afterlife served as a love letter to fans and also pays tribute to the late great Harold Ramis, Frozen Empire pays tribute to Ivan Reitman and is like, you want more? We'll give you more. So if I had to rate this movie out of 10, I would give it an 8. And that concludes my review. Let me know if you're planning on watching the movie. It just came out, so you should have plenty of time to go and see it. If you already saw it, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe if you're digging my content. Every bit of support helps. Well, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and stay tuned for a Film Freak Short as it'll be back next week.